NASCAR announces sellouts left and right. And is Dale Earnhardt Jr. trolling us about North Wilkesboro? How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Lots of news to get to today, but first, I want to thank my friends at NASCAR Pole Position for sponsoring this episode. The June-July issue is out now. NASCAR Pole Position is the official NASCAR magazine. They're featuring even more content creators like Ms. Craft. He gives you a behind-the-scenes look at how to make NASCAR stop motions. And Danny B. from the NASCAR Weekly Podcast shows off some of his epic NASCAR collections. Your favorite writers from the Out of the Groove Weekly Viewer's Guide are in every issue as well. Ben White, Jared Turner, Joseph Wolken, and Dustin Albino has been added to the pole position team. In the latest issue, they've got interviews with Christopher Bell, Austin Hill, Ross Chastain, and Ben even got an interview with the king, Richard Petty. They've actually known each other for years, so there's a lot of great history there. They've got business interviews as well with the CEO of Black Rifle Coffee talking sponsorship with Noah Gregson and Ty Dillon. If you love NASCAR, if you love to collect NASCAR, you have to subscribe to NASCAR Pole Position. Get it delivered to your mailbox six times a year. I also have a special offer. If you click the link down in the description below and use code OOTG, you will get $5 off your annual subscription. And you know what? I have a second offer. The first 30 people who sign up using that code will also receive a free out of the groove bag. Click the link down below to subscribe. Use that code for $5 off. It really helps the channel out a ton. Thanks to NASCAR Pole Position for supporting the show. Lots to get to today. Let's begin with a couple of drivers making their season debuts in their respective series. Arkham Menard Series points leader Raja Karuth will make his Truck Series debut this weekend at Gateway driving the number seven Spire Chevrolet. Exciting for Raja, friend of the channel, 19 years old. Like I said, he's leading the Arca standings, even though he hasn't yet won a race in that series. He's been very consistent this year. He hasn't finished worse than 11th, and he already made his Xfinity Series debut a few weeks ago at Richmond, driving the 44 for Tommy Joe Martin's Alpha Prime Racing. He finished a solid 24th. Now he's making his truck debut. I know, kind of bouncing all over the place, but this Spire truck we've seen with Cup Series drivers behind the wheel, it's capable of great things. Raj is a teenager. He's a full-time ARCA driver, doesn't have a lot of Xfinity or any truck or cup experience, obviously. So I'll keep my expectations realistic, but I'm excited to see what he can do behind the wheel at Gateway this weekend. Just something to watch out for Saturday afternoon. Another driver I want to shout out and show some love to is Parker Kligerman. He'll make his first Cup Series start of the season this weekend at Gateway, driving for Rick Ware Racing in the 15. I want to give Kligerman some love because while we know he's great on TV, he's been great with NBC the last few years. He's also been great on Twitter. I've seen him on TikTok, but he's also been great behind the wheel of race cars this year. He's made five truck starts this year in that 75, and he has three top tens in that truck. He would have four, except he got into trouble in the last lap at Coda. He has been great in that equipment, not just this year, but even the last couple years when he's driven that 75 truck. This year especially, though, he has been a true contender. I just want to give him some love because we don't talk about every truck race or every Xfinity race on this show, but Kligerman deserves a shout out. I hope he does well. It's a Rick Ware car, but I hope he does well this weekend at Gateway. Let's shift gears for a second. Is Dale Earnhardt Jr. the greatest troll in NASCAR? The other day, Ally posted a short skit featuring designer Ryan Williams and Dale Earnhardt Jr. talking about Alex Bowman's upcoming Nashville design. Last year, Jr. helped design a special Ally 400 paint scheme. Looks like they're doing the same thing this year, but that's not the part of this video everyone was talking about. At the beginning, you can see the designer, Ryan Williams, writing something on a whiteboard, and up above, you can see partially obstructed the words, Mark Martin, Wilkesboro 23, as in the year 2023, next year. Whoever thought to put that there is a marketing genius. I don't know if it was Dale Earnhardt Jr., but whoever it was, kudos to you. You got people talking. I'm not reading anything into it at this point. We now know that North Wilkesboro Speedway is being renovated. There will be racing at North Wilkesboro later this summer, and they're planning to repave the facility in time for next year. Marcus Smith of SMI, who owns the track, they've said that they hope to one day bring the NASCAR Truck Series back there. But I'll be honest, all this is still so fresh, it, it doesn't entirely feel real just yet. So I'm not ready to start making wild and wacky predictions like Mark Martin, who's shown absolutely no interest in driving a race car anytime soon, him coming back to race at North Wilkesboro, I don't think that's happening. I think this is just Dale Jr. ally, whoever, trolling us. But still, North Wilkesboro has been active recently. In fact, earlier today, Bobby Labonte, driving a modified, made hot laps at North Wilkesboro Speedway, the first at speed laps a race car has run here in over a decade, since I guess probably 2011.
pretty cool that Bobby Labonte gets to be the first guy to run at speed. So things are happening at North Wilkesboro. Like I said, there is going to be racing there this summer, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. The truck series at this point is still kind of a pipe dream. I think it will happen, but it's probably ways off. Will the cup series? ever return to North Wilkesboro? I'm more skeptical about that, but even that I wouldn't rule out entirely. In fact, I've been advocating in recent months for NASCAR to consider bringing the Cup Series to North Wilkesboro, even if they only sell 10,000 tickets. Bill it as a made-for-TV spectacle. If you want this to be like your throwback exhibition race, I think you go all in, all out. SMI has a, a couple tracks, namely Texas, in their portfolio that I think most fans would be happy to get away from as soon as possible. If that means North Wilkesboro gets a cup date, albeit maybe an exhibition race, maybe an all-star race perhaps, I'm all for it, even if only 10, 15,000 fans can attend it in person. TV's where the money's at anyways, bill it as a made-for-TV event. But that's that's years down the line, getting way ahead of ourselves. I just wanted to highlight that little uh, Wilkesboro cameo, maybe, maybe troll job, maybe it's a hint, maybe it's an Easter egg, but whatever it is, it got us talking. I know I just said TV is where the real money's at, but in-person attendance still matters. To me, that's where you create lifelong NASCAR fans. NASCAR has had some good news to announce this week. This morning, Gateway, or Worldwide Technology Raceway, officially confirmed a sellout for this weekend's inaugural Cup Series event. 57,000 grandstand tickets have been sold out, 1,200 camping spots have been sold out, and according to Adam Stern, a couple dozen suites have also been sold out for this weekend. That's great, great news. 57,000 fans, not including the campgrounds. That's, that's a great number for any sporting event in America. Pretty great news. I hope fans who attend have a good time. I'll be watching at home. I'm excited to see how these cars handle it. It's a flat oval, which I'm a little skeptical, a little worried about, but it is new. There are a number of top drivers in the Cup Series today that have never made a lap at Gateway before, so it is still kind of a big unknown, which you know, could be interesting. The good news doesn't stop there. Yesterday, the last day of the month of May, Phoenix Raceway announced a sellout for their November Championship Sunday race. It sounds like there's still some infield passes available, but the 42,000 grandstand seats have been completely sold out like five, six months ahead of time. Not surprised that the Phoenix Championship is sold out. It's sold out each of the last you know, few years ever since it began hosting the championship. And it actually sold out earlier this spring even. But it's cool to hear them announce it this far in advance for sure. If we include the Phoenix Championship, that's now five races this year that have been sellouts. Daytona, I guess both Phoenix races, Coke 600, and Gateway. Obviously, many tracks have reduced their capacity in recent years, like Charlotte sold out, but probably had 80,000 people there. The place used to seat over 100. But these are still great crowds. 50,000, 40,000, 80,000, all still tremendous crowds. It's remarkable that that many people attend NASCAR races on a weekly basis, especially when you consider that many of these tracks are very remote, far from major cities, they're out of the way. And you consider the fact that NASCAR races in the same country 38 times a year. The Cup Series, forget about the 30 plus Xfinity races, 20 plus truck races, ARCA. There are 38 Cup Series races alone. I know we compare NASCAR to Formula One sometimes and Formula One is huge worldwide, but they race like 13, 14, 15 times a year in Europe, an entire continent. I know Europe's not huge, but the fact that NASCAR has so many races in America every single year and is still able to sell out a good handful of races, even though most of these track owners would admit that they have more capacity than they need at this point, that's a pretty cool thing. And, and this year we've seen across the board, even tracks that haven't sold out, we've seen increased ticket sales. I think there's a couple main factors there. I think the next gen car, the intrigue that it's created is, is certainly a, a top one, probably the leading one. But I think you also got to factor in the pandemic and how for a year and a half, two years, Years, many large events were either canceled, postponed, or were always kind of uncertain. People have wanted to get out, wanted to see these cars, feel the energy in person once again, and this year has really been the first year start to finish so far that fans have been able to do that without too many concerns. So I think there's a couple factors, but the next gen, the importance, and so far I think the success of the next gen cannot be understated. It's great that attendance is up this year. Now, before we go, I want to pivot once again, because yesterday, not only did Phoenix Raceway announce a sellout for the November Cup race, they also announced that they will once again host the championship in 2023. I felt a collective sigh yesterday when this was announced, like amidst the entire online NASCAR community. Everyone just kind of shrugging their shoulders, 
all right? I feel like I've defended Phoenix Raceway more than most online in recent months and years, but even I'll admit that I'm getting a little bored of the Phoenix Championship experiment. You know, I've been to the track a couple times now in the last couple of years, and the renovations they made in 2018, the $178 million renovations they made are nice. It's a wonderful facility to watch a race at. Whether you're on the inside, the outside, the infield, the grandstands, it doesn't matter. It's a beautiful facility about you know 30 minutes away from like the fifth or sixth largest city in the country. There's a lot to like about Phoenix as a facility, but the racing doesn't seem to matter if it was Gen 6 or the next gen as we saw back in March. The racing just isn't great. It's, it's not consistently good. They've had to put PJ1 or resin, whatever it is now, in the outside lanes to try and widen the track. And I think you could argue they've widened the track too far in one and two. They basically run the wall there on the flat side of the track. It's hard to pass. It's really hard to pass. Last November, the championship was decided by a final sequence of pit stops. Kyle Larson was running like fourth, came out first on pit stops and held the lead to win the championship. Clean air is king. There's a premium on passing. And to me, that's not great for a championship venue. Phoenix Raceway is owned by NASCAR, ISC. So theoretically, if they were ever to change the championship venue in the next few years, it would probably go to another ISC NASCAR track. Homestead, which hosted the championship for years, is a NASCAR track. I know we haven't seen the next gen race there yet, but we've seen it race at other mile and a half and it's, it's performed very nicely, I'd say. I'd like to see Homestead reconsidered as the championship venue again here before too long. I agree with something Nate Ryan uh, from NBC tweeted yesterday. He tweeted, next year will mark year four for Phoenix as the championship four host. My guess, the track will get a fifth year as the season finale, and then when the new media rights deals begin in 2025, I suspect NASCAR at least would be open to considering a new market or a rotation. I agree, I think Phoenix is here to stay through 2024. I think NASCAR invested a lot into the facility. They're happy with the at-track experience. They're happy with the market it reaches. The racing, while not great, hasn't been unwatchable, I'd say. Not Texas levels of bad, no, no, no. So I think they'll keep Phoenix as the championship probably through 2024. I think we'll have three more Phoenix championships. And then 2025, once new contracts have been negotiated, that will open up the opportunity for other tracks, maybe even non-ISC tracks. We could see an SMI track like a Bristol or Wilkesboro or Nashville Fairgrounds or an independent track. Heck, we could see the championship decide at Pocono. No, probably not. Point is, there will be more flexibility. NASCAR is committed to Phoenix for the short term, but come 2025, they can try new things. Maybe experiment with a rotation as Nate Ryan suggests. Maybe they go back to a place like Homestead, Miami. Maybe they go to a completely different market that's never hosted the championship race. Let your imaginations run wild. Personally, I'm not usually a traditionalist like this. And I know Homestead, Miami is not the most traditional championship venue, but personally, I would like to see it go back to Homestead, Miami. I don't think we should overcomplicate this. I think that should be the championship venue. But I'm open to other suggestions. I think there are other good tracks and good potential candidates out there as well. This is where you guys come in. Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Where would you like to see the championship decided in the near future? That's gonna do it for this episode. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. We talk NASCAR news, notes, rumors. We react to races every single day here on Out of the Groove. Never a dull moment in the NASCAR world. And as always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters as well. I truly appreciate your support. We'll be back again soon. Gateway this weekend for the Cup Series and the Truck Series and Portland for Xfinity. So a lot of newness this weekend. It's gonna be exciting. Appreciate y'all watching. I will see you in the next video.